Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. So as we've been talking about uh, the UAW since the strike, uh, since that historic contract, outdoing the hard work of organizing, uh, they've, they're have they their organizing members at Volkswagen in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, they're the people at Hyundai in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, you've got Toyota workers in Troy, Missouri, and you've got Mercedes workers in Alabama. Uh, who have come together and said, hey, look, uh, we want better wages, hours, conditions, better treatment. We want respect, dignity, all those things that, well, we union members kind of take for granted. And what's happened is over 10,000 workers have signed cards saying, yeah, we want some of that. But with that, with that comes, well, the union buster playbook, doesn't it? The harassment, the intimidation, potentially firings, all of the things that they've been getting away with for a very long time. Uh, and you got workers who've had enough. And the just recently, the Mercedes workers, uh, the largest U.S. plant for Mercedes, um, they've filed charges with the National Labor Relations Board in response to, well, that company's harassment, intimidation, illegal union busting. And here to share some thoughts on what's going on, maybe why this is happening. I've asked Taylor Snipes to come talk with us. Taylor's a logistics worker there at Mercedes. Taylor, thanks for taking time for us. Absolutely, yes, sir. So let's start with the the organizing campaign. Uh, what what made you guys come around and say, "Hey, look, we want to sign these cards. We want to we want to organize with the UAW." What what brought this on? Uh, look, honestly, I think it's been uh, I think it's been tried before, and it's been coming for a long time. Obviously, with the way the economy is, the way the uh, just the home life balance seems to go more no more and more negative every year, and uh, just the way things have been shifting at Mercedes constantly, where it's it doesn't seem like a shift towards towards obviously the worker. It seems like a shift towards towards management and upper um, whoever's in the uppers that are going to just take more money out of, or put more money in their pocket out of this. So it just seems like a push more and more every day to make uh, life harder on the worker and uh, easier on those guys upstairs. And uh, I think people have had enough of it. And yes, sir. What I find interesting is the fact that Mercedes is is a global company and the only non-union plants are here in the U.S. The rest of the world, Mercedes workers have representation. They're unionized everywhere else but here. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with how our laws are structured and the aggressive stance that this company and a lot of other companies have taken to keep to keep workers well at their at their will. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think uh, I think that is a big reason. Not just that. I mean, we're in the South. We're in a uh, a lower income area of the South. And I think um, they take that for granted or they, they, you know, they take advantage of that and they push harder and harder to, you know, keep it that way. They want to keep people down, less wages, keep the wages as low as possible. And they know that. So they're uh, they're going to fight against it with everything they can. Yeah. So you're going to see that 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 division, uh, you're going to see that Fisher played upon. Uh, quite quite frequently here, and now I, you guys have filed some some unfair labor practices with the National Labor Relations Board. Um, yes, walk me through some of this stuff. I mean, I was reading through some of the the, the charges and some of the claims. Uh, it it just seems like you know union busting one hundred and one. Start cracking down on little things that nobody ever talked about before. Start harassing and intimidating people. Uh, walk me through what what, what your experience is. Uh, yes, sir. So, like, uh, I know my experiences. I'm not sure about the other guys too much or the other people involved. Uh, but mine, personally, uh, it seemed since first when we said we were going to organize, um, you could feel it creeping, like omniscient. And then um, when they went when we went public with uh, coming in with a union, it pretty much took a nosedive, and the videos started coming out of anti-union. This, um, the union can't do this for you. They can, uh, we can do this for you. Um, and it just kept being pushed. And, you know, uh, it, it, at a point, it just becomes um, almost uh, politicized at work. And it becomes uh, it feels like it's an attack on the, the worker every day. Um, and so uh, for me personally, I, I just got fed up with it. I, I am pro union. Uh, I've been to the meetings. I want to I sign my cards. Um, but uh, and uh, of course, I wear my, my union hat. Um, I, I wear my my, bat, my pin. 
and I want to support the union. Um, and I just asked uh, in, a, in a meeting, you know, do I have to watch these videos? Are they mandatory? Um, doesn't I didn't say anything other than that. I didn't push that I was against Mercedes. And um, at that point, it was uh, it was uh, I was told I needed a I needed to be met in these in these meetings. Um, they weren't mandatory meetings or they weren't mandatory videos, but the meetings were mandatory. And I need to put my head down. If I don't want to listen to these videos, these anti-union videos, I just need to put my head down and try not to listen. Um, <laughs> after after that, it uh, it just I could feel it all around me. I could see the the eyes on me everywhere I went. And um, you know, later that day, I was uh, grabbed for having my phone on equipment, um, which is a a what they say is a zero tolerance policy, um, which is. <laughs> Obviously, not what you see when you're working at Mercedes. It's not what is what's happening. Um, you're told you're allowed to have your phones if you have permission from your higher ups, um, which I was personally told that. Um, I have a son who's in daycare. Of course, I want to be able to contact the daycare or the daycare to contact me. Um, and so at that point, they came and got me off the forklift and said, hey, uh, you have your phone on you. Um, and about... I'd say it was, they asked me if I had my phone on me. Then about five, 10 minutes later, they want to come back and they said, okay, come on to the office with us. You know, I'm like, all right, here it goes. I'm going to get a write-up. I'm going to get something. I've never had a write-up, never had, you know, never had a, a warning, never had a late tardy, anything in my name. Um, when they walked me to the office, they just kind of said, pack your things, you know, uh, you're going to be going to the HR room now to see, to see the manager uh, that, that asked you about your phone and the HR rep. Um, when I got in there, I uh, it was the same old spiel. You know, you're not supposed to have your phone. It's a zero tolerance policy. Um, at which point, I kind of brought up, you know, hey guys, it, it seems uh, it seems like this is retaliation. Uh, I said something in the meeting this morning about not wanting to watch anti-union videos. Um, at which point, um, they proceeded to say it wasn't about the union stuff. And in the next sentence, without even breathing, they said. Uh, well, why would you want to join the union? What does the union have to offer you? And started, you know, interrogating me about why I would want to join a union. Um, well, I think this kinda, right here. <laughs> what this is, I mean, yeah, this right is <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's, uh, and that's, that's, I mean, that's kind of how the conversation went. Uh, at that point, I was walked out. My badge was taken from me. Um, I Wait was no longer. Whoa, whoa, stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was expecting a write-up. Yes, sir. They discharged you for yes, having sir. your phone on you? They did discharge me. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Immediately discharged after the meeting, walked out of Mercedes. Wow. I was expecting a write-up. I was expecting, you know, some some you know, surveillance, some stuff like that. But they walked you out over having your phone with you. Yes, sir. With having my phone with me, um, which is known by my team leader, um, which is known by pretty much everybody around us. That's how we actually contact our team leaders. Like say something happens, they're on the other side of the plant. Hey man, I need you. Uh, it's also how I get in contact with my son's daycare. So it's, it, I was in such shock in that meeting when they told me I was terminated that I couldn't, I couldn't speak. I mean, I, I just, I, I, it was disbelief. Now I gotta imagine that, you know, look, we know that in these, in these union campaigns, employers, uh, they're they're advised by these union busting law firms to fire people. They're advised to do what they did to you because it'll send a chilling effect across the rest of the workforce. I have found that when that happens, it angers the workforce. And, and but we, we what kind of response are you getting from your coworkers on this? So um, I I've talked to a couple of coworkers. Um, some of them are saying, you know, good for me. Uh, no, nobody's been negative about it. Uh, obviously. It's kind of a sketchy situation. If you still work there, you don't want to say you're actively talking to somebody because they don't want the same thing to happen to them. I mean, you're, you know, everybody's got a family to feed. It's why the, why we have the union because we have families to feed people to support. And uh, I'm sure that nobody wants to bring that up, but the support's looking good from, uh, from friends of mine, from my coworkers. Uh, I of course see on social media how it's, you know, the people who are going, who've been at upper management for 10 years saying stuff like, you know, they know they're not supposed to do this or it's not about, it's not about union or not, you know? Um, 
but they don't know the details of it. So the people who are who, who are on the front line sitting there with us on forklifts, on tuggers, on whatever, they agree with it. The guys that are up there in the office, of course, they're saying, uh, what a horrible thing to do. It's, you know, they got fired for good reason. Now, you, you said a moment ago that uh, you're, you're forced to watch, you were forced to watch these videos. And the response they gave you is the union can't do this for you, but we can do all these things for you. And again, my question comes back to if you can, why aren't you? Why haven't you been? Uh, because, you know, what I find in, in my experience, workers generally organize, not overly, not usually because of wages, uh, not usually because of benefits. Usually it's about working conditions. Usually it's about treatment. Usually it's about, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know how, how people feel they're valued. Um, so when I, when I talk to people and, and I hear that line, well, the union can't do this, but we can do this for you. That question of, well, why haven't you? You've had all this time to treat us with the dignity and respect that we deserve and that we, we earn. Um, why, why don't you? And, and this is one of those moments where, you know, if I'm, if I'm in your shoes, I'm fighting for that union just to make sure I get the dignity and respect I demand. Uh, absolutely. And it's, uh, it's, you know, they, they come out and they, every day is a new video about we can do this or they, the union can't do this for you. But uh, all you guys have done is taken, taken from us. Uh, it seems like the only what? time you've actually kicked it in, kicked it in gear and tried to do anything is when you got scared and you started making videos and coming out with things because the union started coming along. And there's no promise that you're not going to snatch these things back away before. You've done it before. You've snatched away bonuses before. You've done, you've done these things where you try to make it look like you're doing good and then take it away. So, um, you know, we can't trust, we can't trust that. No, no, I'm right there with you. And you said something a, a moment ago that you said you're, you're not against Mercedes. Um, it doesn't have to be, uh, you're either with the union or you're with Mercedes. You can be a good Mercedes employee, but also be a member of the union so that you get what you're, what you're worth. You get what you, what you earn. Uh, it doesn't have to be that kind of adversarial if or then. It can be both, I think. No. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't understand that. That's part of it that upsets me so much is because if if your workers are looking for a better life for themselves or looking for something to make them stronger, make them more together, why are you fighting so hard against them to try to make their lives better? I mean, it's it's it makes you. It makes us feel worse about who we're working for. It makes us feel worse about going to work every day because now we're we're worried about it, or we uh, we feel like not mess not represented, and uh, we want to be able to have our own voice and have a have somebody looking out for us. Yeah, not your situation, for instance. Um, if you guys weren't actively going through uh, an organizing campaign, if you weren't actively pursuing a union, uh, I, I don't believe you would have any recourse other than maybe filing for unemployment when they fire you, because it's my understanding, Alabama, like Pennsylvania, is an at-will employment state. They don't need a reason to, to fire you. But given the fact that you guys were are organizing, um, you, you have a just cause uh, kind of situation where that at-will that they're used to, uh, that's not the way things go. So maybe, maybe, give them the benefit of the doubt, they made a mistake. I'm not, I'm not that generous, uh, but I'm curious your thoughts. Um, what was the question? I apologize. No, I mean, Alabama is an at will employment state like Pennsylvania. Oh, yes, right? sir. Yes. Uh, so the idea yes, is correct. It is, idea. My apologies. Yes, sir. It is. It is. That's correct. And it is an at will state. And uh, I wouldn't have any recourse. And uh, it's there's I mean, there's nothing you can do. You go, you go to the unemployment and say maybe, hey, I got fired. And they're gonna be like, what'd you do? And uh, <laughs> you go and say, hey, I was, you know, they fired me for a rule they had that they don't enforce, you know, you're not going to get anything from this. I mean, uh, so the only thing we have is this union. I mean, look at, I can't imagine how many other people are out there that have been fired for, you know, whatever reason in this community. And, uh, it's, it's terrible. And with, uh, something that's, you based your economy in the area around this, this big plant, you came in and said you were doing these things for these people. And then you, uh, you kind of, you're willing to throw them out the door with nothing behind them, you know, uh, and that's, that's part of the reason. And, uh, same with anything else. I mean, obviously we've heard a lot of people have heard about the FMLA, FMLA things that have been happening with Mercedes. Um, they've heard about, uh, 
how there's no retirement at Mercedes, the medical is getting worse, they're making people pay more for their deductibles, and it's just, it's, uh, it's yeah, there's no, there's no support. It sounds like the yes, perfect sir. coming out of the pandemic where you were told you were frontline heroes and essential, and I'm sure all of that stuff that you internalized only to have them, well, treat you poorly. So I guess last question I've got for you, you know, do you have a sense of where this is going to go? Because ultimately uh, seeking a you know union job is seeking a better life. Uh, thoughts? Uh, where is this? Sorry, I apologize. I had a call here in that. No, no, My no, apologies. No, no. The idea of you know, where you see this going, uh, do, I, do I, I see this. I I see this. Um, I see the union taking it, man. I I think people are with this happening, and with uh, I think the previous lawsuit they had, like I said, with FMLA and them not allowing people, you know, sick leave, and I think uh, more people in that plant, um, in my plant specifically, I know they changed shifts on us three times this year. People are just tired. They're they're tired of this, and I think. This union is going to come through 100. percent I think we're finally going to get a voice. Um, it's going to take some. It's going to take some. Uh, some hard work. It's going to take some very hard work. But I think. I think we're coming through this, man. And uh, the community is going to be better. There's going to be some naysayers. In the end, uh, I think we'll all. We'll all understand why we were fighting so hard for this. Well, after all, it is all about the workers. It's not about the union. It's about the workers who are the union. And I wish you guys the best. I hope you'll come back and talk to us again as this Absolutely. continues down the road. And I wish you the best uh, personally as well. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Taylor, I appreciate your time. And no, look, this is, uh, I, I didn't realize he had gotten fired. I mean, for something that's as, as minor as that, that is just a pure show of power. And it's what, it's what corporate America has been getting away with, uh, which is why, again, we need massive massive labor law reform. Want to hear your thoughts? Email me, rick at the ricksmithshow.com. Uh, are, are you as stunned as I am? I want to hear about it.